When was Harry diagnosed? 16 months old. Right. Was diagnosed. And, and how did you get that diagnosis? Um, we noticed about nine months old Harry wasn't progressing properly, couldn't sit up, mm. wasn't hitting milestones he should be hitting. Mm. Yeah. And um, we finally went to the GP. They referred us to a paediatrician and they'd done an MRI brain scan. Come back, Harry had brain damage, a form of cerebral palsy called spastic diaplasia. And everything went from there, really. And it was and a phone call. You just got a phone call. Got, I got a phone call from broken the hospital, to you yeah. down the phone, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. How did you? How do you feel as a mum and dad when you got that news? Because you knew something wasn't right. Mm. Yeah. Um, it was a. Uh, well, I was devastated to be honest. Yeah, I, 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 I phoned Glenn straight away, and he actually phoned the doctor back, mm. just to sort of clarify what I was saying to him because he just couldn't believe it. And so what's, what's life been like for Harry? Because um, we said there in the intro that he's, he has been in an incredible amount of pain, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Harry's in pain sort of was 24 hours a day. Mm. Um, constant spasms in his legs, mm. aching, sharp pains. And it, it's devastating, mm. especially when it's your children and yeah. there's nothing you can do. Well, there was um, a procedure that, that was available, three-year trial that was available on the NHS. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and just you're sort of getting close to that, and then that trial, because it was underfunded, that, that, mm. uh, that was withdrawn. Yes, that's correct, How yeah. did you feel about that? It's, de it's devastating. It, it was absolutely devastating for us. As a family, mm. we've battled so hard, mm. and then to be hit with the news that, obviously, we were going to have to fundraise ourselves. And so that's exactly what you did. And the, yeah. the cost of this um, operation that he needed was £75,000. You raised £35,000 on your own. You were doing incredibly yeah. well. But then you met Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of when everything changed. So, so Glenn, how did you first hear about Harry? Um, <clears throat> well, I went to a, a football match, watched a friendly <laughs> football game in my local area, and Harry um, was in his wheelchair leading the two teams out. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a bucket collection. People walk around with buckets. And at that early stage, um, I think the collection was only up to about two or three thousand. Right. So I asked what it was for, what was the problem with Harry. And being a father of five and having a, a young boy Harry's age, when they explained to me what the difference could be from a wheelchair to him even running one day, yeah. obviously it, it, it melted my heart straight away. So I asked to make a £5,000 donation there and then, but be unknown. I didn't want anyone to know. And within sort of 10 minutes, these two were cuddling me and crying no. on my shoulder. <laughs> we, should, um, we should point out, what's, what's your connection to Billericay? So, I've recently bought Billericay Football Club. Um, and you are a very successful man in the construction business. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> I'd say successful, yeah, but very successful. Well, I'll say rich, then. OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But do you, know, do you know what it is for me? It's funny, cos people say rich, but I've been, I've been d down the bottom. I've been very low in life and had different experiences, mm -hmm. and I needed help quite a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've always helped since, since I bounced back. And for me, my involvement in the football club, when I took the football club on, I knew I was going to do something for the local community. Mm. It was all about the local community. And, and disabled children with, with disabilities, it was always going to be around that sort so of thing. So £5,000 for you was just extraordinary, an amazing donation. Yeah, yeah, it was, um, well, it was unexpected. Um, yeah, the most you think you're going to get at a charity match is a couple of hundred pounds. Yeah. But, I mean, I burst out crying when Glenn done that. Well, then, not only that, you went on holiday to Dubai, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, yes. And, uh, and had a bit of a think whilst you were on <laughs> holiday in Dubai. Yeah. Um, and that's when you got a phone call. What did the, what did the phone call say? Um, Glenn phoned me. Um, I was at work at the time, but he said, oh, are you sitting down? And I said, yep, um, sure. <laughs> he said, well, I've been thinking about Harry and uh, couldn't get it off my mind, actually. He said, but I, I want this operation done in the next six months. Um, and I'm going to guarantee the rest of the money. Wow. Gosh, that's incredible. And so... So you topped it right up? Well, at that stage, it was only about £15,000. Yeah. So, but I think the biggest thing to say here is, even when I guaranteed that money, these guys went out and raised another £20,000. It would have been very easy to have sat there and, and rested on me, but they didn't. Mm. And that, I think, is a lot harder for them to do than it was for me to raise the money. So the, you raised the money, which is an incredible thing, and well done to you for, for doing that. <clears throat> but then you actually have the, the big challenge, which is the operation itself, because this is a seven-hour operation, which you, were at, you did on the 28th of April. There's no guarantee here that this was going to be the miracle cure, was it? No. No, there was nothing. But 
We were told in January that if we didn't go for this surgery, within six years, Harry would be wheelchair bound. And there would be no reason no, that, no. that, that would be his life. And that would be his life. So it, it was, if we go for this operation and it, it's not the way we wanted it to go, mm. he'd be pain free. Yeah. And that was which the most was important benefit. thing, was the yeah. fact that he would be without pain, yeah. which he'd had his whole life. Yeah. Yeah, and what, what's your dream, Harry? What did you want to do? What do you want to do? Come on. Mum can no. stay. Mum can stay. Yeah, mum can play stay. Play football, kick play a football. football. Yeah. yeah, he wants to play football with his mate. <laughs> yeah. Because he is, as that's why he was down at the football club. Like your, yeah. like your boys, he's absolutely yeah. mad about football. Exactly. And so that's yeah. the dream. The dream is yeah. to, play, to play football. And as yeah. we saw when... Uh, when he came in at the beginning of this chat. I mean, already he's on his feet. Yeah, he's so much more stronger now than what, what he was when he sort of even come out of the surgery. He's just, these three weeks have been amazing. 